the Gravely ZTHD. Hey, if you've got an acre, two acres, three acres, you just picked up the right mower for your property. I love this mower, guys. We're gonna go over today really quick some of the ins and outs, some of the things you need to know to get the most out of this machine. I'm sure I'll miss something. I try my hardest to pick it all up, but a lot going on in my brain. So go ahead and comment below if I miss something. I apologize. We'll learn together and make this the best mower, the mower of your dreams, the mower that's gonna last you a long time. So let's start on the front end. Really not a lot to do here. There's no grease points. They're all, um, you pull the bearings, you grease them manually. And honestly, what I'm seeing the life out of these bearings, it's not happening very often that they're failing. Most of the time a dealer is doing this on an annual service and you're never having to deal with it. So on the front end, we got tire pressure. These are huge, massive front tires that really, you know, smooth this ride out. They're a four ply. That's good. That's going to mean that you're not as likely to hit a Blackberry and poke a hole in it. But I like to set this front end tire pressure at about 15 pounds. It's going to give you some suspension, but you have to be stiff enough that you don't accidentally pop it off the rim as you're coming and you hit a rock on a, on a tough turn. I do see that happen every once in a while. So let's move also. Let's hit the, since we're on the topic of tires, let's hit the back tires real quick. These big beasts, I like to put at around 12 PSI. That's going to give us a flat profile. That's going to give us maximum ground contact, um, best traction, smoothest ride you go softer than that and you get some give when you're turning you go harder than that it's going to be a stiffer rigid ride and you're also going to have some crown on the top of that tire which is going to reduce your traction okay as we move back what else do we need to know about this machine we got a lot of pivot points here that um, really don't need a lot of maintenance but it is nice every once in a while to hit them with a bottle of uh, this honda lube right here great just hit the pivot points Let's look down here. We've got, you know, here's a pivot point, here's a pivot point, here's a pivot point, here's a pivot point, here's a pivot point. You know, just go around and hit those with a quick spray. Make sure that when you spray this, you're not like dousing the belt with this because it's slippery, right? We don't want to have a belt that's that's oiled up and spinning on it. So those, by lubricating those, it's just going to keep everything moving smooth, fluid, reduce any squeaking that you could have. Hey, I'm sure you know about this. Let me pop over here. I'm sure you know about this baby. You can flip up this, this deck lid here and you can get to the top of the deck. That makes it very easy for when the time comes for you to replace a belt or just simply to clean it out, blow it out. You know, I try personally not to wash this too much. You can, but when you're washing, let's, let's be careful that we don't focus on these bearings. We're focusing around it. So, you know, a lot of times I'll just use compressed air. I'll use our air gun here in the shop or I'll grab my blower and just blow it out. To, to get this down, right, it's stuck. You simply lift up and drop it down. Now it's in place. Deck leveling. Guys, this thing has a crazy strong deck hanger suspension system, but every once in a while this deck is going to get out of level. The first thing I'm going to do is check tire pressure, and then I'm going to get into a side-to-side -side adjustment, um, which is done by adjusting these bolts right here. I'm actually going to just loosen this jam nut. See right there, that jam nut? I'm going to loosen that, and then I can simply turn this bolt head on the top. I can turn it clockwise, to raise it up or counterclockwise to lower it down and make sure you do reset that jam nut or you'll end up with some problems three months down the road. Okay, this is my height of cut. This pin, pretty sweet, very simple, it's magnetic. You just drop it in the slot, the hole, that you want your deck height to, to bottom out in. So pull this out, I want to cut at two inches. It drops down in. We've got a huge range, you can see that from one and a half all the way up to five and quarter inch increments. So if you, if you have some property and you've got a field in the back that you want to, you know, maybe it's that long and you want to cut, this'll do it. This'll cut longer than that. Just make sure you're smart as you do that. To lower the deck, I'm simply going to push here. And then there's a little tab right here on the right-hand side that I'm going to lift up. And that's going to allow the deck to drop down. Really nice to use this foot lever as, or foot pedal as I'm mowing especially if I'm out doing some heavy cutting, I'm in the field, I do, I mow my field with one of these quite often where that grass is quite long. I'm always using my ears, I'm always listening. And if I can see that it's not keeping up, I simply slow down and I kick this up, let it get the grass out, breathe, drop it back down and take off. So pretty slick to be able to do that. Let's talk about these levers right here. You know, they may have come set from your, from your dealership too high or too low. In my opinion, for my height, 
these are a little too high. So I can simply take these bolts out and actually lower them down to match me. And there's also some pivot to them that I can change, you know, kind of where their neutral is. So how far away from me they are, I could suck these back in a little closer and really make it match me. And then there's a rubber bushing right in here on each side. It's actually not round, it's kind of oval. So as I turn that bushing, if I loosen that nut and turn that bushing, it changes the height of this fold down black lever. See how those are not quite even? I mean, they're off a little bit. I could actually level those out pretty simply. And one other thing, right now they're curved out. If I take these loose, flip them around, they'd be curved in. So do I need more room in front of me or do I want less room in front of me? A lot of customization that you can do. And I hope you use these armrests. These get often overlooked. A lot of people want to grab a zero turn, grab right in the middle. You know, my recommendation is to stay away from the middle of the sticks and really use these armrests and put your hands on the outside. That's going to help you really ride smoother, keep straighter lines, just a little more fluid. There's times where I'm kicked back and I'm running with, you know, one hand if I'm on a long straightaway. But it's really nice to just kind of run just like this. You're going to be a smoother operation. All right, let's flip those up. Let's get off of this seat. Here's our fuel fill right here. It's a five gallon tank. I always want to put in ethanol free or at least if I don't have ethanol free fuel in my area, run Startron, a fuel stabilizer, an ethanol treatment. Flip up this seat. Before I flip up the seat, gray lever on the side allows me to go forward and backwards with the seat right here. What's going to fit my leg size, how tall I am. Okay, when I flip up this seat, this is where all my, my electrical is going to be, right? My battery is going to be right here. It's a 12 volt battery. I can just hook that up to my standard charger, charge that baby. Here's my fuse box. Every once in a while, I'll see a fuse get blown. I'm not sure why, but it just happens. So I can pop that down and there's my fuses right there. Pretty simple to pull them out and check. I like the way that this is, it is sealed. It's weatherproof to keep the moisture out. It's amazing. The corrosion, especially if I can get it back together, there we go. The corrosion that happens with lawnmowers. There's so much grass flying around and juice and nastiness. So I like the way the Gravely's protected that stuff. Okay, here's my kind of my control panel, right? I've got my throttle, I've got my choke, got my key switch, and I've got my PTO switch. So to start it, pretty simple. I need to make sure the brake is on. And to get the brake on sometimes, you don't have these levers in neutral, and so you gotta put this, and it's hard. So pull back on these levers, get them neutralized. Bam, that brake went on way easier. Over time, this brake may need to be adjusted. It is an adjustable brake cable. Okay, so if the brake is on and the blades are off, I can start this machine up without being on the seat. Normally, I'm not gonna start it up without being on the seat, but I'm gonna use this if I need to hop off my mower and move something real quick. I don't need to shut it down every time. Blade engagement. I always recommend that I engage the blades kind of at a half throttle and then rev that thing up, okay? And in disengagement, I wanna be quarter throttle or lower. So I'm gonna slow this throttle down, put it on the turtle, and then pop the blades off. And that comes into why am I doing that? There's a clutch under here. This red button is engaging a clutch to spin the blades. And it's also turning a brake on when I push that in these blades have to stop in under five seconds. So if I'm at full engine speed, 3,600 RPMs, just ripping, I gotta stop those blades in less than five seconds, or am I at idle? 1,500 RPMs, it's gonna be much easier on the life of that clutch. Maintenance on the back end here. Hey, Gravely's put on these little wing knobs. If I take these loose on both sides, this back cover comes off very simply. I might as well do it real quick, it only takes a second. As I'm doing that, let's talk about the hydrostatic transmission. This is a serviceable entry-level commercial ZT3100 transmission on this. Initially, my fluid and filters, there's two filters and about four to five quarts of fluid that should be changed between 75 and 100 hours and in every 400 hours after that. By doing that, you're gonna ensure maximum life out of this. I see these transmissions going 1,500, 2,000 hours. They're really awesome. They're smooth. They're fast. They're, they're just sweet. But make sure you maintain it. And maintain it with the right stuff. Use a Hydrogear oil filter. And use the Gravely Synthetic 1550 with zinc. This is made for this machine. It's made to, to hold up long term. Check that out. Okay. 
There's the expansion tanks right here for the transmission. These two little plastic tanks. You'll open it up and be like, there's no oil in there. There's a little bit. And that's all it needs to be. It's really just as that oil heats up in the transmissions and expands, it's kind of an overflow tank. We've got a fuel filter right here. I'd personally change this once a year. It's simple. You got two hose clamps, pop a new one on. Very easy to do. Okay, let's take this cover off. You like that? They got these nice little rubber caps here that, that go onto a captive place to keep it from rattling around. So once that cover's off, I can very easily get to my spark plugs right here and right here. And then you'll notice if you come around, you can probably see it. This is my oil drain, kind of nice. Once I've warmed this engine up, all I have to do is loosen that, take that off, and I'm gonna drain really easily, and I can actually pull it out of here and I can hold it in a spot. There's my oil pan down there. Oil and filter should be changed 50 to 75 hours annually for a lot of people, but if you're running it hard, maybe you're doing it twice a year. And then the most important, in my opinion, yeah, I know oil's important, yeah, I know fuel filters are important, this air filter, right? This thing is working hard. It's sucking in a ton of air, especially as I'm out mowing in the dry, dusty summer. So keep an eye on this. Check this out once a month. I see these things come in just packed with dirt, packed with grass, and the thing's barely running. It's fouling out spark plugs. Okay, big deal. Throw a new filter and spark plugs in. Yeah, but over time you do that, and it's gonna, air is always gonna find the path of least resistance, right? It's kind of like water. You, you ever played in a river or a creek and you built all this rocks across kind of a dam and then pretty soon that water's coming through it, find its spot, and then it gets more and more in that spot. Same thing with this air filter. Air is going to find the path of least resistance. So what we can see actually, it'll, it'll suck dirt through the paper, create a hole, and we're just sucking dirt in. We're killing an engine. I don't see it very often, but this beautiful Kawasaki FR691 needs a little bit more love than that. So just keep an eye on an air filter. All right, what else do we need to know? How to roll it, right? It does not roll very easy. Let me take the brake off. I can kind of push it, but not very easily. If you get down underneath on the transmission, there's gonna be a lever right here, a little black lever right there. And there's one on the right-hand side too. If I pull those back and lock them in the out position, I'm now able to move this machine fairly easy. If I've got a dead battery or Simply, I don't wanna start it up in my garage um, and smoke it out. So there you go, the Gravely ZT HD52. Beautiful machine, a machine that should give you years and years of service and performance. We're here at Carl's Mower and Saw to help you through get the most out of this machine. But now you know some of the things you need to do to get the most out of your machine. Hey, this is Josh from Carl's Mower and Saw. Thanks for watching our videos. We're proud of the fact that we've been serving you with the best in outdoor power equipment since 1990. We're glad that you had an opportunity to sit down, watch our videos, learn something about an exciting new product that we have, something that interests you for your property, or really how to use your equipment to the best of its ability. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, whether it's on Instagram or YouTube. We're excited to share more information with you. See you soon.